All right, welcome back to Anton Math. Now I'm going to be doing some worked examples in in this video. Um, this is for uh, Unit 2 of Part 6 of our Precalculus series. And these are videos using SOHCAHTOA and properties of triangles. And uh, I'm going to be doing word problems. There's a lot of word problems that come along with this section. But before I get started with, with the examples, I need to go over some terminology. Um, let's just say we had a person, you know, in a word problem, we're going to have a lot of people. Let's just say they're looking straight at an object that's right here. We call this straight line eye level or line of sight. Okay. Now let's say that they're looking up at the sun or some object up in the sky. We would call this angle between eye level and um, the line going directly to the object, this would be the angle of elevation. And elevation, oops, elevation is the key word. Uh, in a lot of word problems, they'll use angle of elevation. Okay. Now let's say that they're up in the air, at, or they're looking down at a, you know, a little bug over here, you know, something. They're looking at an object down below their eye level below their line of sight, we would call this angle between their line of sight and the line going straight to the object, this is the angle of depression. Alright, so just another common term to keep in mind. We have angle of elevation, angle of depression, and line of sight, or eye level. Okay, now I just wanted to go over those because a lot of these uh, word problems we're going to be talking about uh, use these different terminologies in them. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's look at this first one. Okay, and the first problem reads, a giant redwood tree casts a shadow 532 feet long. Find the height of the tree if the angle of elevation to the sun is 25.7 degrees. Okay, so now with these word problems, what we need to do is we need to look over the word problem and find all of the pieces of information that we can in order to solve it out. So I have this tree, right? I'm not a artist, so I have a tree. The only trees I can draw are Christmas trees. Right? And it looks like I can't do that very well either. So I have this tree, and this tree is casting a shadow. Right, it's casting a shadow this way, and that shadow is 532 feet long. Now, I want to find the height of this tree if the angle of elevation to the sun is 25.7 degrees. So angle of elevation to the sun, that means that the sun is over here somewhere. And the angle of elevation to the sun, well, that's going to be um, the same thing as if I stand at the tip of this shadow and I look directly at the sun, well, then that should that line of sight should be passing right over the top of the tree, shouldn't it? This is the angle of elevation to the sun to the ground, so that's what determines how long of a shadow I'm casting. Okay. Now, the problem gives us that this angle of elevation, right? In other words, the angle between the ground, this, is the, this ground is my line of sight or eye level, the angle between the ground and the sun is 25.7 degrees. And I want to find the height of this tree. We'll call it H. H is what I'm looking for. All right, well, now we have a problem. We can use SOHCAHTOA in order to solve this problem out. Now, the way these problems usually go is they're going to give you very specialized information. I, I know I need to incorporate H into my calculations. I have this line here, this 532 feet, and this hypotenuse of the triangle is just a pure mystery. I have no idea what that is. Now, in this case, because I have no information about the hypotenuse, we're just going to ignore it. That means that that's not a piece of information that I need to solve out the height of this triangle, right? I'm going to use just the information that I have. So, if I have an angle, I have the opposite side and I have the adjacent side, then using SOHCAHTOA, I'm going to be wanting to look at tangent, right? Tangent is my function that is opposite over adjacent. So, I have that tangent of 25.7 degrees is going to be equal to opposite over adjacent, or in other words, h over 532 feet. Right? So now we have an equation that we can solve. I'm going to solve for h. So multiplying both sides by 532, I get that h is equal to 532 times tangent 
of 25.7 degrees. Now before we move on here, uh, I have to make a note. Um, in the past, up till now, we've been using radian mode on our calculators. Now when you plug in anything with degrees, we need to switch our calculator mode back to degrees. So hit that mode button on your calculator, make sure you're in degree mode before plugging into your calculator. And remember, once we plug something into our calculator, it becomes an approximation, doesn't it? If we don't get an exact number, if it's a decimal that shells off forever, we're no longer exact. So I, I use these little wavy equal signs. So I have 532. If I plug tangent of 25.7 degrees into my calculator, I get 0 0.48127. And if I multiply that out in my calculator, this is going to give me about equal to 256 feet, right? So the height of my tree is about 256 feet. All right, so not bad. Uh, this is a Sokoto example. Now this is an example using one triangle. In the next three examples, one in this video and two in the next video, um, we're going to be looking at what are called two triangle problems. And it's going to be two triangles, either one triangle that's inside of the other triangle, like this next example, or two triangles that are uh, next to each other and share a common side. All right, so we're going to need to kind of share information. So let's go ahead and look at this next example here. From a point on the ground 500 feet from the base of a building, an observer finds that the angle of elevation to the top of the building is 24, oh, I didn't fill in my gaps here, 24 degrees, there we go, and the angle of elevation to the top of a flagpole atop the building is 27 degrees. Find the height of the building and the length of a flagpole. Now it's always useful to draw out pictures here, so let's go ahead and draw out a little picture. I have this building. Right. Pretty tall building. And on top of this building I have a flagpole. A little flag on it. There we go. A little flag. A flagpole. Now from a point on the ground 500 feet from the base of the building, so let's go ahead and document that out. We have this is 500 feet. There's somebody standing 500 feet from the base of that building. The angle of elevation to the top of the building is 24 degrees, and to the top of the flagpole is 27 degrees. All right, so let's go ahead and document that. I have this little angle here, this is 24 degrees, and then this larger angle here, this is 27 degrees. So I want to find the height of the building, I'll call that H, and the height of the flagpole. Now instead of putting a little thing for the height of the flagpole, I'm going to look at the height of the building plus the flagpole, K, right? Because this is what's going to give us the side of this triangle, isn't it? Of this, this bigger triangle, this exterior triangle. Now here again, I don't know anything about the lengths of these hypotenuses, and that should indicate to us that we're not going to use them here in our calculations. Okay, so now let's take it, let's dive in, let's take a look at this. I have my small triangle. Let's go ahead and use our small triangle to find h first. Right now again I have an angle over to the left here. This is my right angle here against the building and I have my opposite and adjacent sides. So if we have opposite and adjacent to the angle with respect to the angle we're going to be using tangent, aren't we? I know that opposite over adjacent or h over 500 this is going to be equal to my tangent of 24 degrees. So I can multiply both sides by 500, I get h equals 500 tangent of 24 degrees. And plugging into my calculator, tangent of 24 degrees in my calculator uh, gives me about 0 0.4452. So my height, uh, my height over here is going to be about equal to uh, 200 and 23 feet. Okay, so we have the first part. I know how high the building is. It's about 223 feet. Now for the second part I'm going to need to use this bigger triangle. Now a common mistake here would be to indicate that k is just this length of the flagpole and that wouldn't be a mistake as long as you then use h plus k 
over here for this long side. But I need to use this whole side of the triangle, right? I can't use this little sliver of a triangle, because this little sliver is not a right triangle. So Katoa does not apply to this small sliver of a triangle. I need to use this entire triangle with this 27 degrees, right? So I don't want to look at the difference in this angle. Uh, that's just not a good direction to go, um, at least not yet, not until we learn about law of sines, law of cosines. So what I'm going to do is the same thing, right? I have this angle is 27 degrees. My opposite side is k, and my adjacent side is still 500. So I have that k over 500. This is going to be equal to tangent of 27 degrees. Multiplying both sides by 500 gives me that k is 500 tangent of 27 degrees. Plugging that into my calculator now, k is going to be about equal to 500. My calculator gives me that tangent of 27 degrees is about 0 0.5095. So my k is about equal to 255 feet. All right, so summing this all up, my building, building, my height h we found to be 200 and 23 feet. And for my flagpole, we need to look at this difference, right? The, the height of my flagpole is going to be the total height of the building and the flagpole minus the height of the building, right? So 255 minus 223. Uh, and that gives us, oh, what, 32? 32 feet. All right, so that's it. We found the building of, or the height of the building. We found the height of the flagpole, given actually very little information about the building of the flagpole, right? All we knew this was how far away we were from the building and the angle that we were looking at that distance to see the top of both the building and the flagpole, All right? This is the power of trigonometry. And this is why we see so many word problems, because it is such an applicable uh, real world concept. All right, that's it for this video. In the next video, um, I'm going to look at a couple more two triangle problems um, with an interior triangle and then with triangles side by side. We'll see you there.